Moving on with the deconstruction of our Fostex 160. I assume this is the beginning of the second video. I'm making these without editing them or looking at the rushes. That's what I've heard them called in Hollywood. Um, so we already removed the caps from these pots because there was a cable that ran to this side of the transport. The transport's removed. The only other thing keeping the shielding in place is two of these pot nuts holding it. That's definitely something we'll need to get out of the way if we're going to deep clean faders and pots. I just use a pair of pliers to loosen them a bit and then do the rest by hand. Okay, so with those two nuts off, then this will just lift up. I think the next thing for us to do is just detach these boards. This pitch control board, red and white cable that's going to be running through there. You can see I already detached it earlier on. Connected to this little header here beside the largest capacitor. It's running through this gap here. To adjust the 12 o'clock position of the pitch control, you would use that trim pot there. You could probably do the cleaning without taking this off, but if you did have any problem you needed to solder, then obviously you'd need to take this screw off. Medium length, wide ferrule, black, and that would just lift out like that. The power switch here, red and white cable running off it. It's going to pass through this gap in here. You see I've already taken it out, but it goes into this header here, just beside the largest capacitor on the other side. Right, pull that out and then it's just slotted in here, I think. It's quite tight. I have removed this from other ones. I don't want to force this unnecessarily. Maybe there's a little bit of adhesive in this one, which there wasn't in the other. You've got quite clear access here to the underside if you needed to do any desoldering, so perhaps I'll leave that one. Our in-out board here, there's two cables. It's the central one of these three white plugs here. Got four pins. I suppose you could get it confused with this one to the right of it. They're well annotated, are they? In fact, they're both tape out, so if you got those two mixed up, it wouldn't make any difference. One sending the tape out to them. In fact, no, maybe one of them's an input and one of them's an output. I'm not sure at this stage without the service manual and the schematic, so be aware that there's a four pin white header. It's coming from the record playback board and that's attached to leftmost as you're looking at it of those two plugs. And the other one's running to this in out board. And then we've got this six pin red one, I guess. It's input into the mixer. This is quite nicely annotated. It does tell you a bit on the board about what everything does. And then this white line. Output sockets. So we're still left with this red and white cable here. Let's find out where that's going. And that is to a little two pin yellow header there. That's a mute control apparently. At that point, that's separate. With these remaining boards, this being the mixer, let's see how is it labelled. What do they call it? Yeah, they do call it mixer. Um, I've seen Tascam boards where they don't call it mixer, they call it input amplifier or something. Slightly confusing. At this end, we've got one, two, three connecting cables. Yellow, two pin. Black, four pin. White, seven pin. And at this end, there's two remaining. Red. Is that four pin? Yep. And... Uh, the tape one that we already discussed. Some of these are double-ended cables so they can be removed from either side. I would make a decision before you deconstruct this about which side you're going to detach from. Uh, otherwise it'll become more confusing than it needs to be on reassembly. There's two clips at the bottom here. Once we get those loose, and that's just gonna... Oh, look, missed out a yellow header here. Oh, and another cable I've missed. Oh dear. Right, so that one must detach from the other side. Yeah, we've got this single pin earth connection here. Anyway, I was saying, um, you see that there are plastic lips. That part of the PCB when you're reassembling, that slots in there. And then there's pins that need to go through holes in the PCB here and here. And then you would push it down so that you that click, that those two clips go back on. But anyway, that is now completely detached and um, giving you access to the rear side for soldering, should that be necessary. It doesn't look horribly, horribly dirty, but I'll, I will be cleaning that. Roughly speaking, it's contact cleaner followed by compressed air, sometimes several times over, depending on how dirty it is. Not 
so much of an issue with switches like that but with pots and faders then contact leader will destroy the grease so you need an appropriate electrical lubricant this was about 25 pound for a big bottle like this but you get little bottles for about six or seven pounds of cake deoxid electrical lubricant um, but that will stop the shaft of these pots and uh, these faders feeling dry and rough the more time efficient option if you're doing a lot of this is some of these more expensive contact cleaners. This one's about five times as much as Service All 10, which is the other kind that I use because it has a lubricant built in. So if I'm doing a lot of work, then I might use that instead. But I do demonstrate that process in a lot more detail in the other videos. Have a look at my channel page. So on this side, again, there's two clips. You see it's lifting out two pins there. Again, it slides forward. Um, this part of the PCB is going into, we can't see very well because of the light, but there's a uh, little lips there that it slots into. And there's cardboard shielding underneath, so the unshiny side is what goes up against the electrical contacts. Now, I guess that was there, was it? Maybe I unplugged it by accident earlier when I was unplugging this channel. Like I was saying earlier, a lot of these cables, they are double-ended. In fact, this one's come undone as well. And usually there are different numbers or colours, so I mean, I'm not going to accidentally plug this one into that, that, or that, because this has got four pins in the cable, and that's a two pin, three pin, two pin, two pin, respectively, so that one must go there. When you've got various two pin ones, it does say in small print what it does. So this one's Dolby Q, this one's the Arrays Head, this one up here is a mute switch control. I think it's going to be fairly self-explanatory what cable goes where. Similarly, the trim pots for calibration are pretty well documented. So it says record level there. It says reproduction EQ, reproduction level. That's your bias frequency there. Not to be confused with this one, which isn't labelled, which sort of implies don't fuck with it. So if you wanted to do basic calibration of levels for your record and playback amplifiers, then it's not going to be too hard. Just leave that metal plate off the back flip over back and forth as you go along. I think that's probably all for the deconstruction. Oh, I know what I've forgotten. Might need to take the door off. Two metal clips. I've never taken one of these off. A lot of these are pretty similar, to be honest, so haha, <laughs> I'm sure I'll be fine. So there's a little indentation. It's got an L-shaped part of a spring going on there. In fact, this is going to slide off here, isn't it? So there's an L shaped end and then there's a straight end and the straight end is pushing against this flat area of the door hinge. I'm trying to catch the light so you can see that a bit better. Oh, easy enough. Yeah, just pull that off. Anyway, yeah, that just comes off like that. The clatter you may have heard there is just this um, cover for the magnetic heads coming off. Why did that come off? Oh yeah, it just pushes on and off. Not exactly sure why you would need the access to it that way, but there you go. At that point, I'm fairly confident that's me covered most of the basic deconstruction you would need to do basic repair, and maintenance and servicing. Let me know in the comments if you feel there's anything I missed. Um, I don't know what order I'll be editing and publishing them in, but I do plan to make some music with a working unit, document any particular electrical problems I have with it during the process of refurbishment, and also do a kind of general review, features overview, comparison with similar units type of a video about this model. Thanks for watching. Bye.